Hello children, welcome to my chemistry class. I am Javashri Ghosh, teacher, demonstration multipurpose school, Bhuvaneshwar. Children, I am really very happy to have you all once again. I think you too feel the same. We just don't know each other, but we feel so connected, is not it? Children, get ready with your science book, notebooks and pen. We shall study some other new concepts of chapter number 3. Let's start. Today we will be discussing molecules write, and writing the chemical formula. But children, before discussing these uh, topics, let us brush up what we had done in our last class. I think you remember and you have gone through NCRT books and taken down the notes. I know you all are good children, you will be doing that. But let's have a recap. We had turned atom. Atom, an atom is the smallest unit of matter that has the characteristic property of a chemical element. I had explained you all. Then comes symbols of atoms and elements. Element symbols for chemical elements normally consist of one or two letters from the Latin alphabet and are written in the first letter in capital. You remember that H for hydrogen, HE for helium, C for carbon, Cl for chlorine and it goes on. Now, atomic mass unit. We had done that. A unit of mass used to express atomic and molecular weights equal to 1 twelfth of the mass of an atom of carbon C12. You remember, we had taken the example of a watermelon, we have cut into 12 pieces. Okay, that one. Now children, we will learn about molecule, or oh, we have learnt about molecules. Just a recapitulation, it is the smallest particle of an element or a compound which is capable of independent existence. I told you, they are capable of independent existence. It shows all the properties of that compound or the element. It is a group of two or more atoms which are chemically bonded. Atoms of the same element or different elements join together to form a molecule. Children, let me talk about molecules now. Uh, suppose we take a oxygen atom. Oxygen atom, hydrogen atom, uh, you say chlorine atom, they feel quite unstable when they are all alone. Okay, They want their brothers, sisters, neighbors to hold their hands, you know. They cannot exist independently. So, they take the help of others, they bond with some other elements to exist independently. But children, there are some more elements like helium, neon, argon, krypton, all these are inert gases. They are noble elements. They feel so noble, they don't want to mix with anybody. They are comfortable in their own position singly. So children, these do not form any molecules like uh, other metals and uh, non-metals. Okay. Now, suppose we are talking about molecules of oxygen. O2 is the mo molecule of oxygen. That means oxygen in the form O2 is stable. Hydrogen in its form H2 is stable. Chlorine in the form Cl2 is stable. Okay. The number of molecule, number of atoms present in a molecule is an element of an element or a compound is known as its atomicity. Okay, children. Suppose example is argon. Argon is a noble gas. It exists independently. It doesn't want any brother, sister, or neighbors to hold his hand. Okay. So, argon is monoatomic. It contains only one atom. Oxygen, O2. It's diatomic because it contains two atoms. To be in stable form, it contains two atoms. One more form of oxygen is ozone, O3. It is triatomic. Okay, three atoms of oxygen are used. Phosphorus, P4, 
tetraatomic okay phosphorus p4 is a molecule of phosphorus that is p4 is the stable form of phosphorus similarly s8 eight atoms of sulfur uh constitute the molecule of a sulfur and it's stable in this form okay and they also determine the atomicity of the element or a compound now molecules of elements as we had discussed children the molecules of elements contain same type of atoms molecules of many elements are made up of one atom of the element for example as i have told you inert gases like helium neon argon krypton xenon and all those things because they are noble they don't want to mix with anybody okay like others molecules of most non metals are made up of two or more atoms example oxygen o2 ozone o3 chlorine cl2 uh, nitrogen n2 these are in gaseous forms the number of atoms constituting a molecule is known as its atomicity okay let's see what's that see in the figure children two atoms of oxygen combine to form one molecule of oxygen o2 in the picture on the screen you can see children two atoms of oxygen they have combined to form an oxygen molecule okay children now see three atoms of oxygen combine to form one molecule of ozone you can see the three atoms of oxygen they have combined to form ozone similarly four atoms of phosphorus combine to form one molecule of phosphorus p4 and eight atoms of sulfur combine to form one molecule of sulfur you can see how the form is is just like the crown of a queen it's not it children we have discussed the molecules of elements they contain single elements but many uh, two or more elements can also combine and form molecules and these are the molecules of compounds molecules atoms of different elements join together in definite proportions of their masses to form molecules of compounds children in definite proportion of their masses means you remember we had discussed about water hydrogen and oxygen are in the ratio 1 is to 8 by mass to form water similarly in ammonia n and h combined by the ratio 14 is to 3 by mass to form ammonia nh3 n is 14 and for this children let me tell you once more you have to remember the atomic masses okay so make a list of it and go through it when you get time n is 14 atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 and that of hydrogen is 1u and here we are considering three atoms of hydrogen nh3 so they are in the ratio 14 is to 3 by mass okay diatomic molecules diamonds 2 hcl one uh, atom of h and one atom of cl they form hydrochloric uh, hydrogen chloride and they are diatomic similarly carbon monoxide nitrogen oxide then comes sodium chloride one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine similarly children let's go for the example try atomic molecules co2 one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen they form tri atomic molecule of carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide and water okay you can find many other examples also from your book if you know certain compounds also you can tell whether they are tri diatomic triatomic tetraatomic or polyatomic tetraatomic four atoms h2o2 hydrogen peroxide we call it hydrogen peroxide two atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen they form h2o2 what about ns3 that is ammonia one atom of nitrogen when combines with three atoms of hydrogen they form ns3 
AlCl3 aluminium chloride. It is also tetraatomic. Poly means more than this. We can we can't uh, just go on saying penta, hexa, hepta, octa. We call it polyatomic. For example, glucose. What is glucose? C6H12O6. Methane CH4. Nitric acid HNO3. Sulfuric acid H2SO4. So all these are polyatomic molecules. Children, now you might have got some idea. What a diatomic, triatomic, tetraatomic, polyatomic molecules of compounds as well as elements that we had discussed. See here children, for molecules we have seen those pictures for elements. Now for molecules you have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. What do they form? Yes, they form water. You can see how they form water, the picture of water. Similarly, this one is CH4, methane, C in the middle and four H atoms. Then comes ammonia, NS3. See, nitrogen in the middle or in the center you can see nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen. This is how they form the molecules. Okay. Look at the screen for a few seconds and you can remember this. Now children, let's go for ions. It's a very important component uh, part of this chapter. Ions. The word ions is not new for you all children. We have discussed these words in class 8 also. Where? Do you remember? When you might have studied electrolysis of compounds in class 8, there we had come across the word ions. When electricity passes through ionic compounds in their molten state, what happens? Although in the solution, what happens? They dissociate or they form two types of ions, positive and negative. What are these ions? These are simply charged particles. It's not it. The molecules of the compounds composed of metals and non-metals contain charged species called ions. Okay, these are the charged particles. Ions can be positively or negatively charged particles that you know. Now, positively charged particles are called cations and the negatively charged particles are known as anions. You might remember children. The positively charged particles move in the process of electrolysis. The positively charged particles move towards the negative electrode that is cathode. So, they are known as cations. The negatively charged particles, they move towards the neg uh, positively charged electrode that is anode and those are known as anions. Compounds in their aqueous solution form charged entities or charged particles you can say NaCl, sodium chloride in its molten state of course or in the solution with water it dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus on electrolysis. Na plus is cation, Cl minus is anion, Na plus move towards the negative electrode cathode and Cl minus move towards the positive electrode anode. Ions may consist of single charged atoms like Na plus and Cl minus. Okay. Ions can also be group of atoms that have a net charge on them like NH4 plus or SO4 2 minus. Till now uh, you have known that uh, some like uh, Ca uh, uh, Ca plus plus or Cl minus or Na plus, Cl minus, these are the cations and anions, these are elements, okay. But there may be group of atoms also. Here you have sodium atom or chlorine atom, is not it? But children, you can have also group of atoms which can make anions, group of atoms which can make cations, okay. NH4 plus. Nitrogen and hydrogen combinedly form NH4 
as cation so4 2 minus these are anions certain group of atoms and you can have some other examples also for example children these are ionic compounds because these compounds on dissociation they form ions okay calcium oxide what is the formula for calcium oxide it's written the cao and one more thing children do you remember the atomic uh, masses you have to remember it otherwise it will be difficult for you to uh, do the numericals so children uh, keep those ready with you calcium atomic weight is 40 unified mass u means remember unified mass oxygen it is 16 unified mass what is the ratio by mass 40 is to 16 is simply 5 is to 2 you divide it by 8 that you know simple mathematics okay children next it is magnesium sulfide mgs uh magnesium try to recollect atomic uh, mass 24 unified mass sulfur 32 unified mass what is the ratio 24 is to 32 and on simplifying we get 3 is to 4 is not it you can also side by side do on your notebooks then you can be confident about it okay keep writing sodium chloride nacl sodium is 30 23 units and chlorine is 35.5 unified mass then ratio by mass comes out to be 23 is to 35.5 this is the ratio we can't simplify it further then comes sulfuric acid sulfuric acid you have three atoms three types of atoms what are they hydrogen sulfur and oxygen hydrogen h2 one atom of hydrogen atomic mass is 1 so two atoms of hydrogen will have two unified units sulfur 32 unified mass then oxygen o4 is there see children o4 one atom of oxygen mass is 16 so four atoms of oxygen will have 64 units or unified mass what is the ratio by mass 2 is to 32 is to 64 on simplifying what do we get 1 is to 16 is to 32 divide by 2 children i hope you something gets into your mind by seeing all these things you can do it it's very simple children just you have to remember the atomic masses of certain elements as in the last class i have told you minimum first 20 you have to remember okay children let's learn writing chemical formula those formula and co of compounds we have discussed or you might have uh, read somewhere but how to write this formula we have certain steps and i'll tell you how to write it very easily okay children be ready with your pens and chemistry notebook the chemical formula of a compound is a symbolic representation of its composition why do we have to write the chemical formula we just can write two atoms of hydrogen reacts with one atom of oxygen we get water and instead of writing h2o which one you find comfortable of course we find the formula comfortable is not it so it's required to write the formula then comes a very new concept that is valency the what is that valency the combining power of an element is the valency it can be used to find out how the atoms of an element will combine with the atoms of another element to form a compound children i'm afraid but let me tell you in this chapter you have to remember the valencies of certain elements remember means by heart or by practice because in the next chapter you will come to know how to calculate the valencies but in this chapter you have to just remember and just wait for few more days you can know about valency okay in the next chapter you have in details while writing chemical formula the valencies of the ions must be charged 
either they have positive valences or they have negative valences okay children in a chemical formula cations are written first followed by anions generally metals are the cations and non metals are the anions first metals are written and then non metals are written first positive valences then comes the negative valency okay a simple way to denote formula a simply criss cross or swapping the valencies of the cations and anions in case valencies are the same the valencies cancel each other what is that criss cross and what is that swapping this is just the interchange of the valencies among the elements let's see how this happens and how we can write the chemical formula very easy children before that let us know which are uh, the valencies of various elements some are monovalent some are bivalent and some are trivalent monovalent means valency 1 bivalent means valency 2 and trivalent means valency 3 monovalent let us go for the positive valencies sodium na plus potassium k plus hydrogen h plus ammonium nh4 plus because we have discussed there are certain group of atoms also for can have valencies but negative valencies are hydride h minus chloride cl minus fluoride f minus iodide i minus bromide br minus nitrate no minus hydroxide oh minus as a whole then bivalent magnesium 2 plus calcium 2 plus zinc 2 plus you can note it down children if you want the the screen is over here you can note it down oxide 2 minus sulfide s2 minus sulfate again group of atoms so4 2 minus sulfide so3 2 minus carbonate co3 2 minus these are bivalent what about trivalent trivalent are aluminum al3 plus okay nitride n3 minus phosphide p3 minus and phosphate it's a group of atoms po4 3 minus now children get ready with your notebooks and pens to learn suppose you are supposed to write sodium chloride in sodium chloride elements involved are sodium with valency yes 1 then comes chloride with valency minus 1 then what happens see here since plus 1 and minus 1 they cancel each other so what is the compound formed compound formed is nacl without any valence is to be written okay suppose we write potassium carbonate okay potassium k with valency plus 1 carbonate co3 with valency minus 2 is not it then what happens there is swapping or the criss cross k will have valency 2 and co3 as a whole will have valency 1 how do we write it the formula becomes k2co3 k2 and children you a question may arise in your mind that why not minus 2 but children this plus and minus signs we are using just to denote whether they are anions or cations okay you are not supposed to use this minus or plus sign while writing the formula k on criss cross method or swapping the valencies k has got Two, so two is to be written with K and one is to be written with CO three. Okay. Then comes magnesium chloride. Magnesium has valency plus two. Chloride and valency minus one. Then what happens? Swapping, criss cross. Mg will have one and Cl will have two. See here. it will become mg because mg is taking the valency of cl that is 1 1 means you are not supposed to write anything 1 we don't write anything okay then comes cl2 i hope children 
something gets into your mind if you see it carefully you will be understanding very easily calcium phosphate calcium valency plus 2 phosphate you remember po4 yes it's 3 minus now the swapping is there see here calcium yes guess what will be the formula yes CA three and PO four whole twice. Why whole twice, children? Because this two is for PO four as a whole. Okay. So we put a bracket, like in the previous case, CO three. Since it is one, we need not put any bracket. But your PO four, ah, uh, two is for full PO four. So we are putting a bracket. That means here. What is the atomicity of this calcium phosphate? Three atoms of calcium, and how many atoms of phosphate are used here? Two is for both. So phosphate has two atoms, and oxygen has four into two, that is eight atoms. Okay. Then atomicity becomes three plus two, five plus eight. Okay, thirteen. Children, I've got some assignment for you all. Uh, as we have discussed you can go home or you are at home i have no children and you can do this you can take down this assignment please note it down write down the formula for the following sodium oxide aluminum chloride sodium sulfide magnesium hydroxide okay the screen is open for you all you can write it down question number 2 write down the names of the compounds represented by the following formula al2 so4 whole thrice ca cl2 kn o3 mg co3 okay next question what is difference between 2 cl and cl2 which is which of these two forms exist in nature let me give you a hint 2 cl means two atoms of cl and cl2 means one molecule of cl and cl2 is independent in nature write the atomicity of the following you can do it i2 h2s hno3 na2so4 that's very easy an element of x forms x2 co3 whole thrice type of compound okay what is the formula of its phosphates and chloride children just think of it for 2 min 2 seconds the element is h x2 co3 whole thrice means what is the valency of x try to remember the swapping yes x has valency 3 and co3 has valency 2 which has come to x and 3 has come gone to co3 so valency of x element x is 3 What is the formula of phosphate and chloride? Phosphate PO4. You can just interchange the valencies two minus and chloride. You know the valency one minus. You can interchange and you can find the formula for this. Okay. What are the cations and anions present in NH4 and O3? NH4 plus and O3 minus and CaOH whole twice. Ca double plus or Ca2 plus OH minus. Okay. so you have to take down these questions write the answers in your notebooks children this is all for today uh promise me to write the answers of these questions read the ncert books and try to solve the questions in those books also stay home stay safe children take care with bit of studies thank you it's all for today children bye